because yeah. 80 million years ago, 90 million years ago, what was the Sahara Desert? Mm. When they found the fossil. Yeah. Was it a the in fossils? The Sahara Desert in Africa. Uh huh. The super crop lived in rivers. That's right. But there's no river there now. Why? Because, because <laughs> in the Sahara Desert is so hot. Right. Well, no, because today it's hot. But a few million years ago, the Sahara Desert it's was not a desert. Forest. It was a rainforest. Yeah. Hello, Hannah. Good, good. Good evening, Mr. Trevor. Good, good, good evening, Mr. Trevor. A hard time getting that out. <laughs> it's good morning, not good night. Look at the sun. No. No. Hmm. I got my days all mixed up. Looks like my wall is crooked. Hey, what's going on here? What's going on here? That's strange. <laughs> it looks like my background is a little bit crooked. Huh. But my everything is everything is fine here. What the what the what the what's going on here? Hmm. So how are you today? Um is, uh, not good. Not good. A problem with your nail polish? No. Mm, problem with your brother? No. Problem with your chickens? No. Why aren't you having a good day? Probably oh, my exam. You had an exam today? Yes. And now, now you have an exam. E you had an exam and now you have an English test. Huh. Huh. Two tests in one day or did you have more? Yes, tomorrow. Another today one tomorrow. and tomorrow. I have many, many exams. So how many exams did you have today? Eight. How do you do eight exams in one day? No. Um, four exams one day. Four today, four tomorrow. Yes. Five today, four tomorrow. No. Oh, have yeah. a test right now. Yes. <laughs> All right, where's Brian hiding? Is he there going to help you cheat on this test or what? Where's Brian? Um, in the, the, the hangout. He's in a hangout. In the tree? No. He's not hanging out in the tree? I used to hang out in the tree when I was a kid. How come you guys don't hang out in trees? Hang oh. out in my mom, uh, my grandmother's house. Hanging out at grandma's house. Oh my god. Hmm. That's not the place I like to hang out when I was a kid. I never liked going to my grandmother's because she used to boil all the food. <laughs> I didn't like the food very much. But all right, we're gonna do our our interests. Interest for speaking eight test. Yeah. So in part one today, we're going to talk about our two topics are going to be about art and dangerous animals. Remember, we talked about Van Gogh and Picasso and we talked about different forms of art. So I'm going to ask a few questions about that. Discussions we had in class and then dangerous animals today in the modern world, not not prehistoric animals. Because when we do our reading comprehension, part two, that's where we're going to talk about those scariest animals in history. The megalodons and the terror birds and the super crocs and all those guys. So, are you ready? No. Too bad. No. Okay. <laughs> we're going to do it anyway. That's it.
All right, so part one, social interaction. The first topic we're going to talk about, our art lesson. So the first question is, do you think art is important? Now, I don't just mean paintings and stuff. I mean, like, you know, sculptures and and uh, statues and, of course, paintings. Um, it could be acting and singing. It's all kind of an art as well, right? Artists. What do you think? Do you think it's important to our our society, our world, our people? Important to us? Uh, I think art is the life and soul so of us. The life and soul of us. So important. Art helps stimulate the development of the nervous system that expands, re regenerate, 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 and strengthens. Leadership skill. And leadership too. Yep. Where did you copy that? Is this your Google research? <laughs> yeah, see what I want you to do in these tests, Hannah, is it's great that you check on the internet to get some ideas, right? And if there's some words you don't know on the internet, then look those up. But what I want for an answer is you to tell me what you think in your words. I don't want you to just read what you can copy on the internet because that's not really you speaking. That's you doing homework and then uh, writing it down and then reading to me. So that's not you speaking. That's you reading. Not the same. Okay. So tell me what you think about art. Do you like art personally? Not about everybody else, but what do you think? Do you think it's cool? Why do you think art is cool? What do you like about it? Uh, because the art is very colorful mm -hmm. uh, and is uh, my favorite subject. It's also your favorite subject. So you feel happy when you do art? Yes. Yeah. What kind of art do you do? Drawing? Painting? Painting? Uh, listening to music or uh, watching what movies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Art is aesthetic. Yeah, it's a lot of be beauty comes from it. A lot of beautiful things come from it. And it makes people feel good about themselves. And it makes the world a better place and a more beautiful place. I agree. So... What kinds of arts do you like best? Is it the 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 artist's kind of art of creation, or is it the the arts of painting and sculptures creating that way? Which ones do you like the best? Um, I think is the movies. Movies. Uh, music. Movies and music more than painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can lose yourself in another world, huh? <laughs> what what are your favorite kinds of music? Uh, I mean, um movies. Uh is the 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 movies for for children. Like the anime yeah. cartoons, minions and Yeah. Nah, you like those, they're funny, yeah. They are. They got a lot of them, that's for sure. Frozen What's the shark one? Oh, no, it was the Finding Nemo had the big shark in there. Yeah. Does your family like to watch movies, too? Does your brother like to watch movies? Yes, my family likes it. So do you often get a chance to watch English movies? Uh -huh. Good, good, good. Then you just put the subtitles on the bottom? Yeah. So everybody can <laughs> follow. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. So if you were a great painter, you said you liked art class, what would you paint? If you could do one big master painting, you know it would be great. What would it be? What would you like to be able to paint or what would you paint? Um, I think... Mr. Trevor? Yeah. No. Chickens? No. Is I pen? Mm, my member, my member in in family. Mm, how do you say that? My member in family? No. Uh, the members in my family. No. Nope. What's the subject? Members. Pen? So. What kind of members? Family members. I'd like to paint my family members. Mm, yeah. Mm, but you can just say, I want to paint my family. Or everyone in my family. Yeah. Sometimes the order, adjective, and subjects, and nouns and can be confusing sometimes. And sometimes Brian will say, I like cat blue. Or I like pizza cheese. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm saying Brian would say, I like cat blue. Or I like pizza cheese. But it should be the other way around, right? It should be a cheese pizza. It should be the blue cat. Today I'm on the blue cat, right? Blue cat robot. I, I will uh, hang every, everything of... Uh, around me you would paint everything around you yeah your walls your your chairs your desks your bathroom yeah and brian and your parents no is my life is big 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 my life more. big 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 what more church up School mm -hmm. uh, or natural? Paint the school more natural? Mm. No. With waterfalls and trees on the walls? Yeah. Mm. The sun? In the classroom? Mm. That would be cool. They should make schools much nicer and greener. They look like jails. <laughs> I don't like the way they build school. I don't like a lot of things about the way they do schools these days. Ah, and you could paint some chickens. It's so easy. <laughs> Let's go to topic two. All right. Now we go to topic two. We're gonna well we had some we had a few lessons on animals of the present and animals of the past, that dangerous animals of the past and present. But these questions are gonna be about today's animals, dangerous animals. So the first question is which animals are the most dangerous? Today, what do you think? Which animals do you think are the most dangerous? I Tell me a couple of animals that you think are the most dangerous and why they're the most dangerous. This is my Brian. Tell Brian to go climb a tree. I think the animals are the most dangerous. Is The animals the most dangerous are? Are. Or the most dangerous animals, again, subject and adjective. Or animals. Are <laughs> dangerous are, animals are. <laughs> are tiger. Only one? Just one tiger. The rest are okay? 
Leopards. 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 Yeah, leopard, but it's leopard. That's how we pronounce it. Tigers. Leopards. Leopards. Snakes. Snakes. Uh, sharks. Sharks. Frogs. What? Frogs? Frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. Frogs? Frogs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the big cats first. Why are the big cats dangerous? The cat? Meow, meow. Well, the big, big cats, because you said tigers and leopards, right? But um, they're both the cat family, right? The meow, meow family. But they're the big guys. Dangerous ones are the tigers, the lions, the leopards, the jaguars, the panthers, the pumas, all these other guys. But why are they so dangerous? Is have poison? Tiger can poison you? Hmm. Tiger is eat, mm, eat people. Yeah. Some of the big cats. Well, probably all of the big cats. If they had a chance to eat you, they probably would. <laughs> so that definitely makes them dangerous for us. Mm, it's a good thing we invented big guns. So you said sharks. Why are sharks dangerous? It's just a fish. See, if you, sharks? Just a fish. Sharks? Uh, uh, shark, um... Mm, shark many times. Shark as megalodon. No, oh, there's no megalodons today. Today is animals. Yeah. Mm. So the biggest one now is the well. I mean, there is the whale shark, but they don't attack people. The most, the biggest, most dangerous shark today is the great white. It's me. Yeah, but do they really eat people? Hmm. Remember uh, Bethany, the surfer in Hawaii? Remember that story? Bethany Hamilton, I think her name was. The girl who was surfing with her friends in Hawaii. She was going to be a world champion. Remember her? I think we did a test on her a couple of... He, he, she, she. He, he, he. She, she, he. she. She, 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 she. What happened to her? Yeah. She, have, she don't have, 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 hand? Hand? You know. Just the hand, that's it? It, no. Mm, the whole arm. Remember, she was she was paddling on her surfboard, waiting for a wave, and a shark came up and <laughs> bit her arm off. A uh, feet. You remember that story? Yeah, mm -hmm. a shark bit her arm off, but didn't eat her. She survived. Amazingly, she survived. Why? Why? Why the the sharks? Mm, the doesn't eat she from what i've heard is with i think maybe it was another class we talked about this but from what i understand i mean i'm not a marine biologist and i don't study sharks but the dangerous the, the really dangerous sharks the big big dangerous ones are the great whites the uh, the bull sharks the tiger sharks it was a tiger shark that attacked bethany beth bethany hamilton and bit her arm off those are big big cat big sharks there's a few other ones hammerheads are dangerous too um and usually it happens in the mornings and the evenings when the sun's coming up or the sun's going down that's usually when most shark attacks happen what i understand and what i also understand is that sharks don't like eating people like we're not there we're not fat maybe if it's a big 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 person maybe they would enjoy that but they like seals. They like the fat. 
of seals and animals. That's what they like to feed on. Um, and, and often it's believed that the sharks usually attack because they think you're a seal. Because think about it, when you're laying on a surfboard, right? You got this big fat body and your body's on the surfboard. And then what do you have? Your hands on the outside paddling. So if you're swimming underwater and you look up, oh, a big fat seal. I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> Takes a bite and there goes Bethany's arm. But then the shark is like, toothpicks. <laughs> And doesn't come back and attack again and just swims away. Because now the shark knows it's not a tasty seal. It's a bony, scrawny person full of bones and no fat. So one one guy described what he thinks sharks, you know, toothpicks, yeah? Right? Yeah. Toothpicks? Well, now, like, we eat, we like to eat chicken wings, yeah? You know, there's a bone and chicken, some meat on it. But he described it for, for a shark, it would be like us taking a box of, of toothpicks because it would just be bones, yeah? So many bones and only a little bit of meat, and only a tiny, tiny little bit of fat. And they like, like fat things. So I think it's true. I think... I think most, I mean, okay, I think most times sharks attack people because they think it's, um, you know, a small whale or, or uh, a seal or another big fish because they look so fat on their surfboards. Um, and a lot of times the attacks are in the morning or the night or the dawn and dusk, right? When the sun is going down or going up. So the visibility is not that good. So they don't really see as well. And most shark attacks... The shark attacks once and then swims away. So it kind of like makes you think that they're testing to see if it's any good. And then they realize it's one of those humans again, disgusting. Blech. And then they swim away. But they swim away with an arm <laughs> or a leg or, or maybe your beep beep. <laughs> so I think that's what happens because most times they don't keep coming back and eating the human. Right. So they obviously don't like it. Now, there are stories where people have been in shipwrecks and stuck at sea and sharks have eaten them little by little. And I mean, they, it does happen. It does happen that sharks do eat people. But um, I think attacking a person is far more common than a shark actually grabbing a person, dragging the person down into the water and then eating the person. You don't usually hear of that very often. That answer your question. So they're dangerous because they often bite us. And when they bite us, it's very, very bad for people. What animals have you seen in real life? You know, snakes, snakes. You've seen some snakes? Okay. There are many snakes. In, in, uh, in my village, many snakes have... have have snakes have uh, poison? You have poisonous snakes in your village? Yes. Oh, what kind of snakes are they? Do you know what they're called in English? Uh, I think... Uh, hmm. Check Google Translate there and then see what, what, what the snake is called in English. The ones that you have in your neighborhood, your village. I've heard there's poisonous snakes in Vietnam, but you live out in the countryside too, so you're not in a big city, so that makes sense. Uh, right. What are they called? Right. Okay, type it in the chat box for me here. Because you have some cobras here too, yeah? Oh, crate. Right. Crate, I think they're called. Crate right. snakes. Let's or mm, wait, wait, wait. Mm, viper, viper. Yeah, vipers too. Oh, these are black and white snakes. Do you have the black and I, white ones, or do you have the blue and yellow ones? Blue. 
Uh, green. Green. The, green. the color is green. Green. That's the vipers. Is I I think the, it is one of the most dangerous venomous snake in Vietnam. Wow, great snakes. You've got vipers here too. It says during the Vietnam War, American soldiers referred to many, many banded crates as the two step snake in a mistaken belief that its venom was lethal enough to kill within two steps. Many banded crates, crates gathered nationwide attention after the juvenile individual bit Joseph Lowinski in Myanmar. Okay. I have it here. I'll get some more information on it. What is the most venomous snake in Vietnam? All right, here we go. What is the most venomous snake in Vietnam? The Malayan crate. Yeah, and this guy. Okay. I'm not going to share it because I don't have the rights. Undoubtedly, the deadliest snake in Vietnam, not only is the Malayan trait one of the most venomous snakes in Vietnam, capable of killing large mammals, including including fully grown human adults. A bite of a uh, Mal Malayan crate also possesses one of the lowest survival rates of all snakes on Earth. Holy macaroni! And you got lots of snakes like that around you. So what do you do if you see one? Kung Fu? Mm. Run. <laughs> you run. <laughs> That's always a good self-defense. Run. And you got vipers too. Oh, my God. I, I thought I wanted to visit you, but I don't know if I want to visit anymore. <laughs> Sounds dangerous. Okay. So what other dangerous animals have you seen in real life? Do you know anybody that ever got bit by a snake in, in your village? In your town? Mm. No. They don't often, but they're usually in, in the brush, in the woods, in the forest. They're not like in the town, right? Um, Sometimes, yes. Yes. Certainly, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, what else have you seen? Is Beer. 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 Bear. Bear. B -b -bear. Bear. Yeah. Beer. It sounds like B A R E, but it's pronounced, I mean, it's spelled B E A R. Teddy bear. Yeah, bear. Beer. So, where? Your teddy bear in your bedroom? Is that the bear you're talking about? No. <laughs> where did you see a bear? What? Where did you see there a bear? There is more. <laughs> I never heard of a small there bear. Is no teddy bear is. Uh -huh. I was teasing about the teddy bear, but you said you saw a bear. Where bee. did a bee? Yeah. B e e. Yeah. Oh, a bee. That's not how bee is like this. A bear is like this. <laughs> Um, well, the bees are there. Okay, are the bees dangerous there too? I think that because it is it fit so it after is boom is get in it and swells up infections and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some bees are dangerous, that is true. I don't know where they where they but so yeah, some of them are very dangerous. Some not dangerous, but some yes. Did you ever go to a zoo before? Yes. Before. Did you see were there any tigers and bears and lions or anything like that? Have you ever seen one in real life? Yeah. You have, yeah. Big animals. Okay. Better hurry up here. Um what dangerous animal would you like to see if you could? One that you've never seen, but you would really like to see one. What would you like to see? I want to see in real life 
is jellyfish. You've never seen a jellyfish? No. Okay. Well, you don't live next to the sea. That's right. You only went to the beach. Huh. Do you know which jellyfish are the most dangerous? Uh, sometimes. Do you know which one is the most dangerous jellyfish in the world? Is this is I uh, I should Google but but I I will see. I saw. I saw. They're called the box jellyfish. They have like long, long tentacles, like yeah. a box jellyfish. Yeah, they, they're mostly found in the northern part waters of Australia and around some some places around Indonesia and and um, Papua New Guinea. Yeah, those those ones. If you get stung by them, you can have a heart attack and you can die. Very, very dangerous. Those guys. Yeah. I want to see it because it it is so beautiful. They are strange creatures, the octopus and and jellyfish. I find those are two of the strangest creatures we have on our planet for sure. Very strange creatures. Um, where we lived in Kumfa, there was a we were right on the Halong Bay, right on the water, but there was also um. A, a, a man-made lake in the middle of the park, but it had a tube, like a big tunnel. So it was the seawater that would come in and fill the lake, and it would go up and down with the tides and everything every day. So it was really cool. So a lot of fish go into this lake. And at one point, it was filled with jellyfish. You could see all these jellyfish, these white jellyfish fishing all over the lake everywhere. It was really cool. You would You would have really liked that. Very cool. All right. So you'd like to see box jellyfish. Yeah. I've never seen one either, but I've seen lots of jellyfish. And I've been stung by many jellyfish too in Canada. They hurt, but at least they're not dangerous. I would like to see, I don't think I've ever seen a real cobra. Cobra snake, like a king cobra from Africa, uh, India. Mm -hmm. King Cobra, the big snake, where the head goes, whoosh, it opens up, whoosh, and they play the flute, oh, and, and okay. the, 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 snakes, the snake dances to the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Cobra. That. Yeah, I think those snakes are, I mean, they're very dangerous, but they're very beautiful, too. Um, and what's the other one I would like to see? I'd like to, I'd like to see um, the Orcas. The killer whales, I know they're not dangerous to people. At least they don't attack people. And I'd love to go, uh, like, I'd like to go out on, on the sea and, 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 and see, like, great white sharks and see how big they really are and, and that. That would be really cool. I've never seen real ones in life. That would be mine. All right. We're going to go to our reading comprehension. Are you ready? No. Ten pounds. Hmm, isn't that what they said about the the no super croc was super croc died out about a hundred about ninety million years ago. Oh, it was the terror bird. So just two million years ago, we there were humans on this planet. So humans did live with terror birds and megalodons, but not the super croc. We didn't have people on Earth eighty seven ninety million years ago. Wowzers! This is a pretty scary stories, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine a three meter tall chicken that runs faster faster than a horse that eats people? <laughs> I bet you, if you caught one, though, it'd make a great dinner. Like a like a like a like a like a terra bird chicken wing. Would be the size of the table. <laughs> you could eat it for a week. All right. So, some questions about the terror birds and the super crocs. 
and the megalodons. Wow. So the super croc was as big as a whale shark. That's crazy. By the way, I don't know if it's in the questions here. I'm going to ask after just in case. I'm not, I don't remember what the questions all are in the desert. Which one is the most dangerous to people? What do you think? Which one do you think would have been the most dangerous for, to uh, people? I think it's the Mega London. Mega London. Why? Because the Mega London died out two million years ago. Mm -hmm. There's another one that died out two million years ago too. Many people. But I think the uh, crop is dangerous same same danger same da same degree of dangerous really i would say the tarot bird yeah. well first of all you have to think right the there were people on Earth, the Megalodon and the Terra bird, they both died out about 2 million years ago. So the oldest human fossil is Lucy, which is 3.2 million years old. So there were people on planet Earth. Uh, were there people, and it was in South America. So were there people in South America a couple of million years ago? Nobody knows for sure exactly what the history is there, but let's say there were. The Super Croc died out 90 million years ago, so... People never saw a super croc, first of all. But how how would a super croc catch you? Well, what would have to happen? How can you die from a crocodile? Um, paddling. What? Paddling? Yeah. Okay. If you were paddling on a surfboard or swimming in, in northern Australia... There, there, you would have some saltwater crocodiles swimming in the sea, and yeah, they might attack you. Probably would I attack can't, you. I can't run. I don't know how fast crocodiles run, but but I don't think they go long distances. But you can't run if you're in the water. No. <laughs> if you're in the water, you're in big trouble. So the super croc, and again, super crocs usually live in rivers. So how do people? How do, like I know in, in Africa, a lot of people die every year from crocodiles. How does that usually happen? What normally happens? What are the people doing when the crocodiles attack? They're usually washing in the rivers or playing in the river or washing their clothes. And then a crocodile sneaks up and, <laughs> and then, uh-oh. There goes Billy. Ah, bye, Billy. All right. But if you're sitting in your house, do you think the crocodile is going to come knock on your door? Mm. Probably not. Right? Crocodiles don't usually go walking around in the village. They usually like to stay close to water. They get out of the water to nap. Hello, Brian. And two million years ago, how many how many people do you think were deep sea fishing? What? Deep sea fishing, going out on big boats and putting fishing nets out in the sea and catching big fish. <laughs> big fishing. Do, do you think they were doing that two million years ago? Probably just, yeah, they were probably just going out in canoes, right? And there would have been a lot more fish then than there is today because they only had small populations. So do you think a megalodon the size of a bus or bigger, what is it, like 25, up to, up to 20, 23, 25 meters long, 20 meters, 20 meters long, do you think, yeah. they'd, be, do you think they'd be swimming on the beach or do you think they'd be swimming... In the rivers? No. They probably always stay out in the deep water. So the chances of someone seeing a megalodon would be pretty rare. 
Right? Even now, it's rare that people see a shark, right? Most people never see a shark. So I, I imagine only a few million people on the planet, maybe. And the, the big shark like that would be like a big blue whale, you know, big, 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 big fish in the ocean. Probably nobody ever even saw a megalodon. And you're you're so small. <laughs> even if you were swimming, maybe they wouldn't even bother with you. They like there's a bigger fish over there. <laughs> they go eat the big fish. He's I, a monster. Yeah, you'd have to go swimming in deep water to to have to worry about a megalodon. But what about the terror bird now? He's running around in the jungle. You could be outside farming your potatoes, and then it's like. Uh oh. It's a terror bird. And he's standing there looking at you. Hmm. That looks mm. like breakfast. Hmm. And he runs faster than a horse. A uh, silly pick. A what? A silly pick. A sleep pick. 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 Yes. Well, they found fossils of these birds. So. Uh, apparently, history says they did exist. I would I think. I, I would. can run. You can run? Faster run. Than, you can run faster than a horse to the house? Yes. Faster than a horse. <laughs> yeah. They say the terror bird, they believe it could run faster than a horse. No. Mm. So which do you think would be the scariest to your family? I don't know. Mm, I think the terror bird would be the most scariest because the terror bird could come right to your house and sit at your front door and wait for you. Crocodile would be in the river. I think I so care. I can uh, think uh, about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back you know, two million years ago, humans were not the top of the of the food chain. You know, animals would hunt people. <laughs> it was a very different world, and people back then, you know, two million years ago, I think we, we probably lived in mostly caves and things like that. We didn't have houses yet. It would have been a very scary time to live. And there was a lot of other animals that were very dangerous then too. <laughs> you 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 didn't you didn't go walking in the park by yourself a few million years ago. That was way too dangerous. You stayed with big groups of people all the time and you had to. You had to try to be safe. There's so many crazy animals out there. Wah! I can't imagine what it would have been like. Okay. Megalodon would be dangerous. That one bite and you'd just disappear. He'd just swallow you. If he can eat a rhinoceros, his mouth is that big. Yeah. He could eat the whole family in one bite. That's big. What group of animals includes snakes and crocodiles? Remember when we were doing that lesson and we were reading? What what is it? Um, snakes, turtles, crocodiles. What family do they belong to? I think group uh, retire, retire. Rep, 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 reptiles. Reptiles. That's right. They're reptiles. And yeah, you have a lot of reptiles around your house. Wow. So of those three that we talked about and read about, which one died out about 90 million years ago? Which one people probably never saw? Um, Which one died out <laughs> about 90 million years ago? Remember we were talking about that? Saying that people probably never saw this one. Super croc. The super croc, yeah. It lived somewhere between 100 and 90 million years ago. Between 100 million and 90 million years ago. So he, the, he's been gone for a long, long time. But the, the megalodon and the, the terror birds, 
apparently they were still on this planet about two million years ago. Sheesh. So, which one lived on the continent of Africa? At least that's where they found his fossils. The crocodile. Super croc. Uh, super croc. Super yeah. croc. Well, it's a crocodile family. Yeah. All right. So that, that, that was the question I wanted to ask you. So they found it in the Sa Savannah Desert. So what did they say there? Where, 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 where? They found this crocodile. I don't think the Sahara Desert. Yeah. I didn't think there was any such thing as Savannah Desert. The Sahara Desert. Remember the Sahara Desert? That's the biggest desert in the world. Yeah northern part of africa we talked about that sahara desert and i researched this super croc finding and it was in a country called mali m-a-l-i and the sahara uh, and and mali is like 80 or 90 percent of it is right in the sahara desert there's a bit of they, they touch the jungle a little bit down in the southern part but how in the world could they find a super crocodile in a desert it lives in rivers. How's that possible? If they lived in rivers. Uh, the, the, the. Dada. Dada. Not mama? Dada? No, the explorers. Uh huh. By uh, the. The fossils, the crocodile bones, yeah. View. Do. Do. New? No. No. Um. Type it. Bones. The bones, yeah. But yeah. they found they found the bones of the super croc in the Sahara Desert. But crocodiles don't live in the desert. They would die in a desert. So how come they found it in a desert? How is that possible? It explains in our lesson. Um, Why is that? I, I think the um, um the satellite satellite. Not how did they find it. It's how could it be possible the place? How is it they found it in a desert? You know, that's like saying, I found a fish in a fossil of fish in your village, but you don't even live next to the water. So how could the fish be there? If people didn't put it there, how could the fi how could the crocodile be in the middle of the desert? Because eighty million years ago, ninety million years ago, what was the Sahara Desert? When they found the fossil, yeah, was it a de the fossil? Sahara Desert in Africa. Uh huh. The super croc lived in rivers. That's right. But there's no river there now. Why? Because, <laughs> because in the Sahara Desert is so hot. Right. Well, no, because today it's hot. But a few million years ago, the Sahara Desert it's was a not a desert. Forest. It was a rainforest. Yeah. I think it's only it only started changing into a desert like 10,000 years ago or 12,000 years ago, I think. So basically, a million years ago, when people were evolving and growing up, uh, evolving in, in, in uh, Africa, the Sahara Desert was not a desert. It was all a rainforest then. So the landscape has changed. The Sahara Desert grows every year. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it takes more from the jungle in Central America every year. It takes a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, because at that time, it was a jungle with lots of lakes and lots of rivers. That's right. There's a lot of history. huh? Because before the Sahara Desert is the 
foreign mm -hmm. many changes a forest what many trees yeah many trees many rivers it was a very different world then even antarctica today uh, i heard scientists say that antarctica the frozen island underneath the earth yeah the south pole antarctica it's all like um, kilometers of ice and it's covered in ice that too a few million years ago i don't know how long ago that was a rainforest too long time ago okay last question um, what is the word that means from a very long time ago so these animals you could describe them the megalodon the terra bird the super croc you could even say the e egyptian civilizations these are all very old what's the word for very old ancient ancient that's right ancient <laughs> yes the world has changed many many times see the atlantic ocean is new because millions i don't know how long ago because if the planet is like 5 billion or 5.8 billion years old but hundreds of millions of years ago or a few a couple of billion years ago the earth was all big one big continent europe was attached to north america africa was attached to south america uh, australia was attached to india but over millions and millions or hundreds of millions of years the atlantic ocean started dividing and that ocean gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the pacific ocean gets smaller and smaller and smaller the americas are moving into the pacific and asia is moving into the pacific so the Atlantic Ocean, it gets bigger and bigger every year. The planet is always moving. Little, little, little bit every year. Cool, huh? Mm. All right, you little macaroni. I'll see you in Interest 9 next Monday. You little vocab champion, you. Woo -hoo. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. I got to go test Bella now. Bye, Brian. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Anna. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.